Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your October 2024 tarot card reading. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, we got a card that slid right out. So let's go ahead and start with that one. Um, protection. Okay, well, this could apply in multiple different ways. We'll see kind of how the rest of the cards show up for us. You might be feeling a little protective over yourself or over your family or maybe over a project that you have going on, or maybe you need to do that. Maybe you need to exert protection and protect yourself from maybe people who have malicious intent or people who are not necessarily on your side or not cheering you on. You need to protect your energy, protect your peace, all that kind of thing could apply. Again, we'll see what else comes out to see really where this fits in, but that might be a major theme for you as the month of October um, progresses. So let's see the animal spirit. Okay, we have the snake spirit, which says time to heal. Well, maybe you need to protect your time and space so that you can heal because maybe there's something bigger coming down the line that you need to be prepared for and you need to be ready to receive. And sometimes when we're not necessarily in that, now I'm not saying there's like a fully healed place or anything like that, but maybe there is something that's creeping up for you that you have to deal with, you have to confront, you're going to have to go through the process of letting things go or forgiving people or forgiving yourself or whatever the case is so that you can come to a place of wholeness and acceptance so that when it is time for something good and and beneficial to come in that you ultimately will be ready to receive it so you know there does seem to be some kind of preparation going on where Sagittarius you're going to have to prepare yourself for something else that we might not necessarily know what it is yet okay I want to protect your energy at all costs, protect your peace of mind, keep out people who are trying to stir the pot. Okay, this is not a time for drama. This is a time to stay focused. Oh, beautiful. And we have the two of wands, the very first card. Exactly. To stay focused on the vision that you're trying to create, to stay focused on the dream that you have and the dream and vision that's driving you. So we have the two of wands, the six of coins, and the two of coins. Now, I'm going to actually start with the six of coins first, because I really like that for Libra season, because it's an indicator that things are coming into balance, but there might need to be some kind of outflow in order to receive the inflow. And again, time to heal. There does need to be something that goes out. Now, it could be actual money because this is a money card. It could be money or ex an expense that you need to, like fixing your car or fixing something around the house or maybe even buying something to beautify your environment or something like that. Um, but again, that's purposeful. You got to fix your car. Okay, well, your car is really important so that the next opportunity can come in and you're not going to be limited mobility wise, right? Or you want to make your space more beautiful. Yeah. So you can feel good to elevate that vibration so you can be in that more receptive state. So don't be worried if there is some kind of an outflow. We do have that eclipse on October 2nd. We have Pluto stationing direct as well in Capricorn. We have Jupiter, your ruling planet, stationing retrograde on October 9th. It's happening in opposition from you. So, you know, there could be some kind of something that has to turn around, but it's not a setback. It's, I mean, it, you could perceive it that way, but it's not, it's not a setback. What it is, it's creating space so that things can become even. But remember, you are needing to focus. So again, if something has to come, if there has to be some kind of cost or, or an expense that, that you have to take care of, it's not worth it to stress over it. All that energy that you could spend stressing should be applied to the vision and doing what you can do to create and actualize that dream. I do think Libra season comes with a lot of effort. This is not an easy season this month. Okay, this is not one of those, let's just kind of skirt through it. Let's just kind of pass by, you know, we'll kind of just float or flow. I don't think this month has that kind of flow. 
there's a lot of positivity. And I do think the Jupiter retrograde is kind of internalizing the Jupiterian energy, helping us to believe in ourselves, to believe in our capabilities, to have hope and optimism about what we are capable of doing. Um, so that's a good thing, but I do think there's a lot of energy and effort and, and will that we need to exert into things. We have to kind of push that pedal, that push that gas pedal down a little bit harder right now. But if we're staying focused and we're not getting all riled up about some kind of expense or cost, we're going to be in a really, really good place. There does seem to be a trade-off going on with that two of coins. You may feel like you're kind of juggling a lot. Now, this is a really common energy that we've had for the past several months. This is not really a new thing, I don't think, where we're kind of feeling like we're straddling the line between our new world and our new future and the old where we're still looking around and seeing a lot of the remnants or the ghosts of the old life and the old decisions. And the future hasn't really actualized quite yet either. So we're kind of one foot in each camp. And so we are probably are feeling like we're trying to keep up two things, the old and the new. And we're really trying to figure out how to really release the old so the new can come to fruition, but we're not quite at a point. Like we can't just drop everything. We can't just completely walk away. There are a lot of loose ends that we have to tie up. And now maybe that protection makes a little bit more sense. Like there's a lot to do. There's a lot of time and effort that needs to be put into stuff and distractions and people who come in and try to disrupt. I mean, you just don't have time for that. You, you, you literally do not have time. Um, you don't have the energy. You certainly don't have the capacity, like the mental capacity to deal with that. So you are going to have to be in a highly protective mode. Probably the only people that have access to you are going to be your loved ones that are closest to you, your closest employees. If you're a business owner or, you know, the people you have to work with on a day-to-day -day basis, your clients and whatnot. But other than that, anything outside of those little essential bubbles, it's like that it doesn't even exist for Sagittarius, okay? I'm seeing you being really selective, which as you should be, you should be selective, you should be picky, you should be discerning uh, because your vision is at stake. You know, your, your dream, it's worth the effort to put into it. Ten of Swords, not surprising. Ten of Wands, there's the effort. I knew it. <laughs> I knew there was effort. And then we have the Three of Coins. So one of the reasons why I love the Ten of Wands is because it does suggest that whatever energy you need and whatever resources you need, you will have. So even though I think the Six of Coins is kind of a mixed bag, okay, because there's always a flow with that. That means there is something flowing out, like I said. So there's an outflow, but there is also an inflow. And you do seem, again, ready for the inflow. There are probably a lot of things that you're going to have to do on your own. I don't know. I mean, we do have 11th house activity with Libra. We have 7th house with Gemini, with Jupiter and Gemini. There might be some energy of collaboration where you do get to work with people. And we see that here with the three of coins, but I feel like that's very surface level and somewhat minimal. The majority of the work is going to be done solo for you, Sagittarius. Okay. This is probably going to be done in a very not so glamorous way. This is the dirty work. This is us in the trenches doing what we need to do in order to accomplish these goals. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be such hard labor, but it is gonna require at least your time. And the 10 of wands is dedicated, okay? And I know Sagittarius that you will be so, this is the one thing I do love about Sagittarian energy. You do have that whole like, well, the hunting vibe, right? So you got the bow and arrow in the symbol, pointing that arrow at the target, shooting the arrow and it going straight toward the target. So when Sagittarius wants to be focused, it is like laser sharp focus. And many of you are actually Vedic Scorpio. So that kind of ties in as well. You've got Scorpio in the 12th house. So there are some aspects of that laser sharp focus that really ring through for many of you. And this is going to be a time where, yes, you are going to have to have that laser sharp focus. And there is going to need to be a little bit of uh, maybe, I don't know if isolation is the right word, but there might need to be a little bit of isolation in order for you to get the stuff done. 
Again, protection, protecting yourself, protecting your projects, protecting your assets. You're not going to want to open this up to just anyone. I do think with even with the three of coins, not everyone is privy to the process. Not everyone is involved in what goes on behind closed doors. They're just going to see the end result. They're going to see the surface level stuff. There's going to be some superficial conversations, but there, like this feels like an iceberg quality to me where you're just showing the tip of the iceberg and like, okay, here's, here's this, this is what we're going to do. This is the idea. This is the concept. People say, okay, great. But they don't realize that there's this whole other part to the iceberg, this giant percent percentage that is all the work that's done. And I think you kind of prefer it that way because you don't want anyone telling you how to do this work. You don't want anyone telling you how to do your process. This is something, like I say, it's very solo. And even if you do have loved ones and people that you interact with every day, there are just some things that if you want it done right, you're going to have to do it yourself. Okay. And I do think it's important because you are preparing for the next wave. We all are. We are all preparing for the next wave with Pluto stationing direct in Capricorn, we know that by next month, November 19th, Pluto is going to be out of Capricorn forever and always never to touch ground there again in our lifetime. So we're all in this prep mode, really getting ready for what the Pluto and Aquarius Aquarius era is going to bring. Okay. And for you, that's third house activity. So there's going to be a lot of movement. So whatever this hard work is, whatever this progress is, it is essential to support the movement and the growth and the creativity that Pluto in the third is going to bring. Okay. I haven't talked about the 10 of swords yet, but it does indicate something that is that you're really, really done with. Now I'm kind of sensing this is someone else's energy. I'm not, cause I'm not feeling Sagittarius going victim mode. I'm not really sensing that. I'm not sensing that you're going to play the martyr and say, oh, poor me. Oh my gosh, look at how hard I'm working and like looking to get your ego stroked. Like I'm not seeing that from you, but it is possible that you might be seeing other people reaching a point of defeat. And that's probably the type of person that you're going to need to protect yourself from because no one has time for other people's defeatedness. No one has time to, I'm not saying you can't pump up the people that you love and cheer them on and whatnot, but if there are people that are legitimately capable and yet for whatever reason are coming up with a million excuses why they can't do something, Sagittarius will not have the pay. You're already kind of an impatient sign as it is. Uh, and especially with your optimism, like you just don't have time for people who are, who are like just total downers, you know, people who can't look at themselves and see their own internal capabilities, who people who can't believe for themselves, who can't hope for themselves and who just kind of accept something that is way beneath them. You know, and again, I I think that's the kind of energy you're going to have to separate yourself from. And maybe with this 10 of wands, like there is something about these kind of mopey people. And I don't know, that's been coming out in the past few readings. I don't know exactly why that message is coming through so strong right now, but it is. There's going to be a big difference between the mopey people and the optimistic, hopeful, capable people. The separation is going to be really, really clear. So the mopey people are out. They're completely not allowed in your sphere at all. But I think it's going to motivate you even that much more to work that much harder because there's that, well, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be a mopey person. I don't want to be defeated. And I'm not going to let anything. I'm not going to let any obstacles defeat me. A lot of empowerment comes from that comparison. Four of Cups, Queen of Swords, and Five of Cups. Okay. This does feel like a month where you are going to have to make some really hard decisions. We see that with the Two of Coins. We see that here with the Four of Cups because there does, there does seem to be opportunities coming in. There seems to be people trying to reach you, trying to access you. 
and you are going to have to go full. Now, I don't think this protection, by the way, is like a, a wall or a blockage. Okay. It's an energetic protection in a more high quality way than that. You're not doing that out of fear so much as you're doing that out of hope and faith specifically hope as it fuels faith. And the way people try to come at you, I just, I don't know that they're coming at you in the right way. It's almost as though they're trying to appeal to your emotions. Now I'm not saying you're not an emotional being. We all are as human beings, but I just don't know that that's the right play for you right now. You're not in a place where you're going to be emotionally manipulated by people. You're not going to be, you know, you're not going to like the, the tugging at your heartstrings. It's just not really going to work right now. I think the way to appeal to a Sagittarius is more practical and it's more like assistance oriented. Hey, Sagittarius, how can I help you with this 10 of wands as opposed to, oh, let me tell you about this story and let me tell you what happened and let's see how it makes you feel. I just don't think you have like, you're, you're just not going to vibe with that all that much. I'm looking at this queen of swords. You know, I think you're in a much more logical place, more rational you're in kind of a cut and dry, black and white type of place. You're not really wanting to operate in the gray area right now. You're not wanting to have any confusion. And again, it's more mental, it's more cerebral. So all this emotional stuff is just not that appealing to Sag right now. Uh, you would rather see progress. You'd rather see money coming into your bank account. You'd rather see progress within the relationship. You'd rather see new clients coming in. You'd rather see all this new stuff than all the whiny stories that people have. Um, and I just don't think you're going to be feeling sorry for people who want you to feel sorry for them. And I don't know why this is coming through so strong. No idea where this is coming from. But again, you just simply don't have time for that. And I just, I just don't know that you have, like, I'm not saying you're not empathetic because I, I know you are, but it's like, it just kind of feels like you've gone kind of, I don't want to say you've gone cold either, but your heart's just not available for the wimpy stuff, you know? And I look at this five of cups, because I mean, you do have your own stuff going on. You do have your own losses, okay? And you do have your own things that you're trying to let go of. But see the difference between you and there, maybe there's gonna be a lot of comparison between you and other people. Not that we like to compare, but sometimes we need to gauge kind of where we're at. The way you handle loss is not by going into victim mode. The way you handle loss is by picking yourself up by your bootstraps and continuing on. It's by soldiering forward and, and pressing on and getting in the trenches and doing what needs to, to happen, doing what needs to work. And maybe that's why you don't really have a lot of empathy for these wimpy, whiny people, because it's just like, okay, like what are we going to do with the whining? There's nothing productive that comes out of the whining. What are you going to do about it? If you're not going to do anything about it, then just be quiet and just sit there and, and deal with it. Like that's your choice. And maybe there is, I'm even getting irritated just even saying the words and thinking about it. I, I, there's a lot of irritation there. A lot of irritation by, you know, on Sagittarius's part for, for the martyrs. Okay. Um, because you do have your own real stuff that you have going on. And this five of cups is not an easy card. It's not easy to lose and to experience grief and to feel, you know, the potential remorse or regret over something. But I just don't see Sagittarius letting themselves fester in those kinds of emotions because all, it all comes back to the 10 of wands because you are going to do the work, you know, you're healing, you're, you're growing, you're evolving, you're ready for the next thing, you're preparing, you're letting go of the past, you're doing all of it. And it is tough work. And unfortunately, very, very few people do that or are capable of doing that. And it's going to be really clear to you who's on your level, who's on your mental and spiritual level and who isn't. Not that you're better than them. You're just in a different place energetically. And it's good for you to know that because that way you can align more appropriately with appropriate people 
to help you actually accomplish your goals because this whiny stuff, these are not people who are gonna be able to help you and you're not gonna be able to help them either. That staying intact, staying that, keeping that wimpy stuff alive or keeping those relationships intact will eventually lead to resentment or something a little bit more on the quote unquote toxic side. Okay, so we don't want that. We're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So unfortunately, you might have to say goodbye to some people. You may have to say goodbye to certain opportunities because they're at that that place, that 10 of swords place, which you just simply are not. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pull out the clarifier. So we're going to open up these cards. We're going to pull out a whole bunch of new cards, like three cards per card here. We're going to talk for another 25 to 30 minutes. So we're going to get like a whole second reading in the comprehensive reading. So if you want to join, the link for that is in the description box in the comment thread down below. So let's go ahead and get started and see what comes out. So you can kind of see what we'll talk about. We have the nine of wands, starting with the nine of wands, we get the queen of coins. This is the practical energy that I'm talking about. It's also like just in the 10 of swords again, 10 of swords, another four of cups, six of cups. Oops. Hold on. We got a couple that flipped over. And we'll take the hermit there and we'll take the king of wands there. Hold on. <laughs> I just dropped all my cards. All right. What else, Sagittarius? So we've got one there. So what else? The emperor. Oh, lots of masculine energy there. Really masculine. For some reason, this Libra season is coming out especially masculine. I think that's because we've got Venus in Scorpio. Um, yeah for most of the month anyway. Um, okay, Three of Cups, Knight of Swords, another Queen of Swords, Strength. Yeah, you're gonna need the Strength for the Ten of Wands for sure. Getting a lot of repeat cards, beautiful. Love the Wheel of Fortune for you. Another King. A lot of choices for you. Seven of Swords, Page of Wands, Seven of Coins. Last but not least with the Five of Cups. Okay, beautiful. All right, this is where we're gonna pick up in the comprehensive. So if you wanna join, again, the link is in the description box in the comment thread down below. Thank you so much. Have a great month and I'll talk to you soon.